In this video, I'll explain how to R bind data frames by column index in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So in this video, I will show you an example. And this example is based on the two data frames that we can create with lines two to six of the code. So if you run lines two to three of the code, a new data frame object is appearing at the top right, which is called data one. And if you click on this data object, you can see that a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our first data frame. And as you can see, our first data frame contains five rows and two columns, which are called X1 and X2. And then in lines five to six, we can create another data frame, which is called data two. And if you click on this data set, another window is opened, which is showing the second data frame. And as you can see, this data frame contains also five rows and two columns. However, these two columns are called Y1 and Y2. Now let's assume that we want to R bind these two data frames using the R bind function. Then we might try to apply the code that you can see in line eight. However, if you run this line of code, you can see that at the bottom in the RStudio console, the error message, error in match names, names do not match previous names is returned. And the reason for that is that the column names in our two data frames are not the same. So as you have seen in the first data frame, the columns are called X1 and X2. And in the second data frame, the columns are called Y1 and Y2. So if we want to R bind those two data frames, even though they have different column names, then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 10 and 11. So in these lines of code, I'm using the R bind function. And then I'm also using the set names and names functions to specify the same column names for the second input data frame data two as the first data frame data one already has. So if you run lines 10 and 11 of the code, you can see that no error message is returned anymore. And you can also see that a new data frame object is appearing at the top right, which is called data all. And if you click on this data frame, you can see that we have created a merged version of our two input data frames, where the rows of the second data frame have been R binded below the first data frame. You can also see that the columns of our merged data frame are called X1 and X2. So the column names are the same as in our first input data frame. Please note that it's very important to make sure that the ordering of the columns in the first and the second data frame make sense from a theoretical viewpoint, because otherwise you might have the risk that you are merging the wrong values in the wrong columns. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video, so you can find it there. If you have liked this video, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.